Hello, welcome back to the Bibliophile Hour. I'm your host slash cousin, Erica the Bibliophile, and I have a drama-filled, action-packed three series for you. And we're starting off with book one of Jolie and Keandre, A Gangsta and His Good Girl by Bianca Xavier. I'm going to put the links in the description of where you can find these books if you ever want to read the book that I'm talking about. So let's get started. Started. I just want to put out a disclaimer that there are three Jolies in this book. So if I get tongue tied, it may be just me trying to remember which one I'm talking about. But here we go. Jolie is sitting in the garage that was turned into her mini apartment doing homework when she hears her parents arguing. Jolie Sr. says he doesn't regret his son. And his wife, Lynetta, tells him that he should because he messed up everybody in the house and hasn't accepted his part. So we get a flashback from two years ago. Jolie's younger sister, Jayla, was being inducted into the National Honor Society. I was too when I was in high school. And Jolie was nowhere to be found, Jolie Sr. She found out on Twitter that her dad was in a car accident, leaving two people dead. And can I just pull over really quick and say how messed up it is to find out some information about your own family on the internet? Let it be Twitter, Facebook, whatever. It's just like people are sending her, I'm so sorry about what happened to your dad and like mentioning her on Twitter. So she's just like, you know, like, what are y'all talking about? And come to find out her dad was in an accident. I'd want to fight. I'm sorry. I would just want to fight because even though it's not those people fought, it was probably in the news and that's how they found out. But it's just like, I want to fight. Like, (laughs) I just want to fight because it's out of your control, but it makes you mad at the same time. So at the hospital, they get a shock that Jolie Sr. actually has a son, Jolie Jr., who is in the ICU fighting for his life. So remember when I said there's three different Jolie. So we have Jolie Sr., Jolie the daughter, and then Jolie Jr., the son they just found out about. And Jolie Jr.'s mother, Vanessa, died. And her mother, Victoria, blames Lynetta for her death, which makes no sense. Because if Lynetta wasn't there, she didn't know about this son. And she didn't even know that they were that he was still seeing Vanessa how was it her fault? But I guess her mother's grieving, so she's just saying anything. And she says that Jolie Sr. was in love with Vanessa and only married Lynetta because she threatened to leave and take the kids, which once again makes no sense because if you're really in love with this person, go be with that person. She can't she can threaten to take the kids, but you can go to court. And that's another thing. Men because I was just going to say black men, but men in general, stop being afraid of court. If you want your child and you have, you do have rest of your child, but fight for it. Don't just let that woman threaten you. Because if anything, let her threaten you and use that as evidence in court. Like, look, I'm trying to be a part of my child's life, but she's threatening to take him away. We can have split custody, joint custody. I mean, don't be scared of them. And if he, I just don't think like in this day and age, you don't have to force marriage. You just don't have to. Jolie Sr. made it through, but he's paralyzed on his whole right side and was put in an induced coma. So now we're back to the present time and Jolie Sr. is still in therapy and he now walks with a cane. He comes into Jolie's room and asks her if their relationship is okay. Jolie tells him she's disappointed because she thought he was perfect but he's just another fuckboy. Yes, but that's also very disrespectful. I'm like, you can't call your daddy a fuckboy. Um, but that's one thing, like little girls who have a close relationship with their father, you grow up and realize that like your daddy's your whole world and he just seems like such an amazing guy. But at some point the glasses come off and you realize that he's human. And although his relationship may suck with your mother, that has, well, it can have nothing to do with his relationship with you. 
Billy Sr. was a drug dealer. And although he had money saved with him no longer bringing in money and then having to pay medical bills and then paying for therapy and still trying to maintain their lifestyle, of course, that money's going to go quickly. So Jolie had to give up her full time status as a student, her apartment and a car, you know, to cut back on money. So now she's just half time working at a dance studio and she's going for a double major of business and dance. Jolie has two friends, Octavia and Riley, and she's also talking slash dating a guy major who really only seems to be interested in her virginity because, you know, he's like pressuring her a lot, you know, like saying, I love you. We should be ready to do it. Take it to the next level. And I, she should be able to see that because it's like if you bring it up more than once, then I'm cutting off talking to you. Any type of relationship we may have, because I can tell that you're only interested in this one thing. Jolie overhears a conversation between her dad and her godfather about her dad needing $75,000 to get back in the drug game. We are introduced to Keandre Cornell Kincaid, a.k.a. TK. He has been in an abusive on and off again relationship with his girlfriend, Cheyenne, for six years. TK sells drugs. His parents run a prostitution ring, which is fronted by a sex shop called Sensations, where his girlfriend, Cheyenne, works with her sister, Chastity. He is in the process of opening up a strip club. Cheyenne informs him that she is going to Vegas this weekend with her sister, so he has to cover her shit, which I do not understand because if you work for me and my family, you not just, and even that, like you ain't even got to have a close relationship. You're not just telling me that you going away for the weekend and I got to cover your shit. If I got to cover your shit, you're going to come back to not having a job. And TK is not a people person. He always stays to himself and only has two friends in his life. But he had two friends. He now has one because the other one was killed. And TK has recently started sleeping with Riley, which is Jolie's friend. TK's parents, Carter and Sabrina, were vacationing in Dubai for one of their anniversaries when they were offered an indecent proposal, which means a man came up to them and offered Carter money to let him sleep with his wife. Carter tried to refuse, but Sabrina accepted for $150,000. And they used that money to start sensations. Sabrina used to be a principal, which I find astonishing. It's like, how do you go from being a principal to a prostitute for one night and then starting a sex shop which behind the scenes is a prostitution ring because of what you did which is crazy it's like you see how crazy life can turn around child um but yeah she used to be a principal but after they made their first million she quit of course why wouldn't you jolie is at the library studying when she overhears a couple girls talking about making money having sex There's a certain code that you have to use to get in, but she misses it when Octavia shows up, but she caught the name of the place, Sensation. So after hearing her daddy have the conversation with her godfather, she wants to now sell her virginity to get the money for him so their family can get back in the position of power they used to be in. When she gets to Sins, she was expecting a woman, you know, from the conversation that she was eavesdropping in on. But instead, it's a man, and that man is TK. But when they're talking, he introduces himself as Dre, which is kind of off for him because everybody knows him, and they know him by TK. So because she's somebody new, he went with half of his real name. He gives her a packet to fill out, which she takes home. And while reviewing her application, 
he tells her she's not cut out for that line of work, but he'll find something else for her. Because in her application, she's saying how she wants to use the money to put her family back. Basically giving too much information on a job application because she's telling him about her dad, how she wants to use the money so he can give back on top. And it's just like, girl, that's too much information. So Jolie is at home when she gets a text from TK that he's outside and he got her address from the um, application. They sit in his car and just talk, but that leads to kissing and finger play, which I find crazy. Because it's just like, you just met this dude. How are you already doing this with him? And afterwards, he goes to visit his dad, telling his dad about Jolie. Carter knows Jolie Sr. and immediately tells TK to leave her alone. Don't mess with her at all. Whatever. TK calls her but gets upset when he hears a man in her background hanging up on her, which I find so funny. You not only have a girlfriend, but you having sex with chicks on the side. So how do you call this girl you just met and you're upset because you hear a guy in her background? So later, even with Cheyenne lying beside him, he's watching Jolie on Facebook Live dancing and then gets upset again when a guy appears behind her dancing with her, but he can't see her face. And that's crazy. Like, okay, seriously, because I've done that too. It's just like, you find somebody like, y'all maybe spoken one time and now you think you got some type of claim on them, but you snap back into reality and realize that you don't. But it's just so crazy how those emotions can so quickly take over like that. Like, that's my person. That's my human. You don't talk to them. So it's been two weeks since Jolie and TK have spoken. Octavia notices that she's sulking while Riley is only concerned with getting some dick. And she's, you know, she's just being extra with it. Like Riley just keeps saying stuff. So they will ask her about like, who's this guy that she's seeing? And then I want to get back to Jolie because it's like, Y'all sat in the car that one time. Y'all did what y'all did. And then he calls you and hangs up on you. And then y'all haven't spoken for two weeks. Why are you now sulking? It's like, that makes no sense. What is there to sulk about? You don't know him. And Octavia's throwing shade, asking Riley, whose man is it this time? And Riley tells them about TK. But remember, TK introduced himself as Dre to Jolie, so she doesn't know who TK is. Jolie goes back to Sensations to check on her application. But this time, Cheyenne is there, and she's behind the register. Jolie asks for Dre, and Cheyenne flips out because nobody, not even his mama, calls him by his real name. So she goes in the back and calls TK on the phone. Like, who is this bitch up here calling you by your real name? Are you fucking her? Who is she? And it's just like, whoa, are you serious? And, you know, he remembers that he introduced himself as Dre. So he tells Cheyenne, man, leave that girl alone. Don't mess with her. And so she says, oh, okay, well, I'm about to beat your bitch up. And Cheyenne and her sister go back out to the front and they jump Jolie until she's unconscious. Putting her body in the car, they dump her in the middle of nowhere. A nurse happens to be driving by, and she sees Jolie and calls an ambulance. At the hospital, Jolie has a concussion and a dislocated jaw. And for some fucked up reason, her mom, Lynetta, doesn't seem to be too concerned with her daughter's condition. But how are they going to pay for the added bills? And it's just like, really? You don't want to know who did this to her. You not even caring about if she's okay. All you hearing is, I got to pay more money. So I'm mad about that. TK comes to visit Jolie, but she asks him to leave and keep his crazy girlfriend away from her. I know that's right. I'm like, look, I just met, going, once again, going back to, they have only talked and met with each other one time 
outside of her coming to Sensation, you know, trying to sell her virginity. They sat in that car one time. And it's like, I come back thinking I'm checking on my application. And because you gave me your name, I then got jumped by your girlfriend and her sister. So you, your girlfriend, and her sister can all stay away from me. But the next time I see y'all, well, see your girlfriend and her sister, I got something for her. But, you know, he leaves and he uh, pays for her medical bills. When he gets home, Cheyenne has rammed her truck through his gate, you know, to make it open up, tore up his house. But then she has the nerve to be sitting by his pool, sipping on a martini. And I'm like, what? He dunks her in the pool, telling her it's really over between them. So it's like, not only do you break my gate, you tow up my house. Then you got the nerve to still be at my house, sipping on a martini like everything is cool. But that's his fault. Because when I first read that they've been in an abusive, on again, off again relationship for six years, you've condoned this. So this means she has done this multiple times and you just take her back. And it's like, that crazy shit, I'm not with it. You don't get to act crazy, then come back later saying you sorry, and that's just supposed to fix everything. That's not how this works. Ever been listening to your favorite podcast and think, hey, I want to start my own? Then you need Anchor. It's the easiest way to make a podcast. Let me explain. First, everyone's favorite word, free. There's creation tools that allow you to record and edit your podcast right from your phone or computer. Anchor will distribute your podcast for you so it can be heard on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and many more. You can even make money from your podcast with no minimum listenership. It's everything you need to make a podcast in one place. Download the free Anchor app or go to anchor.fm to get started. Only senior goes to the hospital and goes to, you know, accounting or the billing portion of the hospital to make arrangements to pay the bill, because of course they can't pay it all at once. And he's informed that it's been paid in full. So he says, you know, by who? And of course they can't give him that information, but he's trying to figure it out. So because the bill has been paid in full, He now thinks that his daughter is messing around with a married man and the wife is who beat her up. How did we get there that fast? Just because the bill was paid in full. It's like, you know, people randomly go to places like hospitals, grocery stores, whatever, and give these people insane amounts of money and say, you know, pay as many bills as you can. That could have been the thing. Or, you know, it could have been anything else but this. I was like, I couldn't think of another explanation right off the top of my head. But you just go straight to your daughter being a side chick and the wife caught her and beat her up. And it's like, it wasn't just one per. you know, like we know this information, he doesn't. But it's just, you know, it wasn't one person that did this. She got beat up by two people. And why do you just automatically assume the worst? for your daughter. And Lynetta and Jolie Sr. once again have an argument about his cheating that led to him having an outside son. And it's just like, at this point, how many times are y'all going to have this argument and nothing change? Because the boy has been at home with them for two years now. And this is a constant argument of if you never cheated and you never brought this boy into my house, everything will be okay. And it's just like, how many times does the the son have to hear this? It's just like, okay, you hate me. I'm obviously a mistake, an outside baby, all this type of things. And it's like, you can only say that so many times. And I know it's breaking his spirit. And it's like, you are just so rude. And if you honestly feel that way, let me get to basically what I'm trying to say. Leave. All you got to do is leave. Because if you really felt that way, you could leave. Instead of just making everybody else miserable by constantly bringing up the fact 
that he had a son. And this is something I want to say to so many women. If you cannot handle the fact that you were cheated on and that a child produced from the cheating, leave. Because constantly bringing it up and harping on it does what? Nothing for nobody. And so she says she felt she feels as if he really did only marry her because he knew she wouldn't leave if they were married when she found out that Vanessa was pregnant. Because Lynetta has warped views on marriage and divorce from her parents and their relationship. So once she's married, she's in it for life. So she feels like excuse me, Jolie Sr. used that against her because that was some information that she shared with him. And so she now reveals that before his accident, she was finally pregnant with their son, but miscarried after his skeletons fell out of the closet. And it's like, how sad is that? You had two daughters and for some reason, people always want a son like that's just going to complete the family. You know, whatever. And it could be the opposite. Like, you have two sons, and it's like, this daughter is just going to make our family complete. And to find out that your husband could be possibly dead, because at that time when they got the call, they didn't know who was dead. They just knew two people were dead. And then you find out that there's a son, you know, laying up in the ICU as well. And he was with the woman that he was with before you. And that supposedly was the love of his life. So she tells Jolie Sr. When Jayla turns 18, she may want a divorce. Which I could see that too. Because it's like you do make it work for the sake of the children. But that always backfires. It's like I want my kids to grow up in a two-parent household. Why? When y'all hate each other. I could see if it was a loving household. But if you... If I can hear y'all arguing every other day about the same old thing, who wants to stay in this house? I would rather y'all be separated and be happy than subject your kids to all this yelling and bickering. Oh, but because I see mommy and daddy married, that's going to make me grow up and be a great human being. Like, where in your mind does that make sense? It doesn't. So Jolie has major over and they both hear everything that um her parents are saying and he mentioned to Lynetta about Jolie possibly seeing a married man and that's how her bill got paid so with Major being there he also thinks that she's messing with someone else so he asks Jolie to make the relationship quote-unquote real and then finally like start which I thought they were already dating but I was wrong and I guess this is where it becomes really real and they agree to date and after she agrees tk shows up and basically tells her you know send him home or i'm gonna make my presence known so she sends him home and gets into tk's car which how is he popping up i'm like i thought you agreed to leave her alone and you paid the medical bills and we should have been done at this point but of course it wouldn't be a book without it I'm just speaking logical. He promises to stop messing with Riley, which I also find to be crazy because it's like you got a whole girlfriend. So you agree to stop messing with your side chick because you find out that Jolie is her friend. But then we also find out that Major, who is trying so hard to take Jolie's virginity, is creeping with TK's girlfriend, Cheyenne, and Riley. So Riley got her a little black book somewhere. She can call on whoever she wants. And I never understand people, Major, because Major works for TK. You know your boss is crazy. You know that's your boss. He provides you with money. So it's like you messing with your livelihood by messing with this crazy man's woman. So why would you mess with your boss's girlfriend? And then Riley is just for everybody. So that really doesn't matter. After two weeks, Jolie is back in class from getting out the hospital. 
she tells Octavia all about her drama. And Octavia is the type of friend that you want. And Riley is the friend you pray to never have. Riley is secretly jealous of Jolie. And she was happy when she fell on hard times. It's like, because Jolie, when Jolie Sr. was on top, you know, she had the car, had all the latest clothes. She's pretty. You know, she was just all around. Everybody loved her. And Jolie has to basically act like a slut to get people to like her. And so, and when I say I, Riley is the friend you pray you never have is because I don't want you smiling in my face while you can't wait for the day that my whole life falls apart. And that's when you're finally happy when my life is ruined. Like, that makes no sense. You're my friend. Why are you happy that terrible things are happening to me? And if you feel that way, like, if you don't like me that much, you don't have to be around me. Let it be known that you don't like me, but then you don't. And that's the thing. She don't want to be seen as a hater, although that's exactly what she is. Also, Riley really only wants to be on TK's arm so she can have access to his money to stunt on Jolie. Which, once again, makes you a terrible friend. So now you want to throw up in her face like all the things that you have. But the sad part is Jolie was never like, you know, she was blessed with that, like, quote unquote, blessed with that lifestyle. But she's not the type of person to flaunt it. Jolie is really like the essential good girl, which, you know, it's kind of a half and half of parents who are drug dealers. They either want you to take over when they die or feel, want to retire, or they want you as far away from the lifestyle as possible. And I feel like this was Jolie Sr. He didn't teach her anything about the game. She didn't know anything about the game. So it wasn't just like, oh, look what I got. It's just like, you know, my dad bought me this. Look, friend, is, you know, is what I'm saying. Jolie has been DM DMing a man from Dubai on Instagram about selling her virginity. He switches, he had one name and one account, but he switches to another account that is J-I-S-A-F. Octavia and Jolie plan a double date, which would be Octavia and her boyfriend and Jolie and Major. Riley, who is sitting there, she includes herself and TK. And it's once again, she's just trying to throw TK up in Jolie's face. And she hasn't she hasn't even been getting a response from TK as of lately. But when she sends him a picture of herself and Jolie asking if he wants to double date, he quickly responds, yes. So now it's a triple date. And Riley, sweetheart, I want better for you. Because how do you text someone? You get no response. But as soon as you send a picture of you and your quote-unquote friend, best friend, that's the only time you get a response? Even though you use that as leverage because you knew it, but when it's confirmed in your face, are you not upset? Almost as soon as they get there, Major has to leave. Cheyenne is blowing him up, threatening threatening to expose him unless he comes to her now. TK doesn't pay for Riley's ticket because they went to the movies. I should have said that. Or even, um, you know, buy her any snacks. He really pays her no attention. He only used her to get there to get to Jolie. So, like I said, he doesn't pay for her ticket. And he even lets a man take the open seat next to him because, you know, they all sit together. So he can sit next to Jolie. So after the movie, TK takes Jolie home to his home where, you know, they're just talking. He learns she's uh, allergic to tomatoes. And he also goes down on her. Riley sends her text, you know, the next day saying she spent the night with TK and how he was eating her out and it was the best sex she ever had. And. Which is so funny because it's just like Jolie is literally laying right next to him 
while she's sending these text messages. And it's like, girl, you trying so hard and it don't even have to be that way. And if anything, see, that's why I said Jolie is a good girl because let it had it been me. I just took a picture of him laying next to me like, this the guy you with last night? Because I could have sworn what you saying he did to you is what he did to me. Would have blew up her whole little spot. Because it's like you trying so hard for somebody who genuinely, genuinely <laughs> loves you and is your friend. You're trying so hard to shit on her. And it ain't even like that. Uh, TK is having a meeting with his father and another person involved in their business when Jolie Sr. and Conway burst in with two guys holding guns. Conway is Jolie Sr.'s best friend and Jolie's godfather. Conway found Jolie's last location was Sensations before she was attacked because Jolie Sr. is still trying to figure out who did this to his daughter. TK tells him the truth, you know, about how they met what she was actually doing there, and what led up to her being attacked. And Jolie Sr. tells him to stay away from his daughter. TK is now outside smoking with the guy from earlier in his truck when Cheyenne rams her truck into his. She then proceeds to get out and take a metal bat to his truck and his ribs because when they got out the car, you know, to try to stop her because it's just like she's going on another one of her rampages that everybody just seems to brush off later. And when he get out and she hits him in the ribs with the bat, TK almost punches her. But instead, he just goes to her truck, gets her purse, take out her wallet and takes his black card and tells her again that they are done. For real this time. And Jolie Sr. goes home to confront Jolie about wanting to sell her virginity. And just like her mama, she throws up his cheating, how his cheating ruined their family and how if he hadn't did what he did, she would now feel the need to sell her virginity to try to get them back in the place that they were. And TK has Pee Wee come pick her up to come see him in the hospital, which I I found so funny. But he started to put on some proper clothes, you know, don't have my man looking at you. And it's just like, we not together? What you talking about? I could wear anything I want. Because it was just a little bit about her having on a sports bra or some whatever. But it was just so unnecessary. Sabrina is coming back from Dubai, finding out that TK is in the hospital. On her way, she gets a call from Cheyenne. And this is where I start to not like Sabrina because she sees Cheyenne as a mini me, which is a problem within itself. If you see somebody like that as a mini you, I don't like you because Cheyenne is terrible. There's nothing good about her. No good qualities whatsoever. So she loves Cheyenne. Like she sees Cheyenne as a mini me and she loves her for her son which makes no sense. Because like I said, there's nothing good about Cheyenne. So why would you want that for your son in his life? And when Cheyenne tells her what happened and what she did, instead of checking her, she just tells Cheyenne she needs to stop hitting on him all the time. How do you get a call from your son's girlfriend telling you that she not only rammed her truck into his truck, But she also took a metal bat to his car and his ribs, which result in him being in the hospital. But your advice is stop hitting him all the time. Cheyenne also tells her about Jolie making Sabrina instantly dislike her, which makes no sense. It's like, what is there? Why do you dislike her? But that's more to come later. Cheyenne doesn't even know that TK is in the hospital, which makes, because Sabrina tells her, you know, I'm on my way to see him in the hospital. And she's like, he's in the hospital? Yeah, your crazy actions resulted in him going to the hospital. You hit him in the ribs with a metal bat. What did you think was going to happen, Cheyenne? 
when Sabrina go walks into his room in the hospital, she doesn't even acknowledge Jolie. She's surprised to see her there, but she doesn't say anything to her. TK sends her out to get some food for the both of them. And when she just tries to walk out, TK calls her over to give him a kiss in front of his mom. And Sabrina is shocked by this, but she doesn't say anything until Jolie leaves out the room. When Jolie comes back, she, Cheyenne is in the room and she overhears them talking about her. And she walks in to see Cheyenne now laying next to TK. So after she puts the food down, she grabs her things and leaves. So now she's putting TK and all his drama to the side for like the third time. She's making things official with Major, but somehow finds her finds herself on another double date with Riley and TK, which makes no sense because when offered to come, I just would have said no. I don't want a double date with y'all. Riley, I'm not trying to see your fake ass no more. And TK, you got enough drama going on with your crazy ass girlfriend, so I'm good where I'm at. And throughout the day, she's just looking out the window. She's uninterested, which is obvious, which I still don't understand why she showed up in the first place. It's like these people mean you no good. In some ways, it seems like they only mean you harm. So yeah, I wouldn't be interested either. But like I said, she's a good girl slash naive slash just a good person. So she doesn't really know how to say no to anything, which now we can see is biting her in the ass. So Riley calls her out and says if she didn't want to come, she didn't have to because she's bringing down the vibe and everybody else is trying to have a good time. And this is where I feel like Jolie Sr. and Lynetta, they both failed her. Because it's like, you should have taught her how to have little comebacks or something like that. Because I'd have been, I'd have threw some shit up in her face. So I'm like, you trying so hard to bait me and antagonize me and just be on my jock so hard. But I'm sitting at the table and which is fucked up within itself. It was like, honestly, y'all two friends and both of the men at the table, like y'all all have had each other in some type of way. But I just would have told Riley y'all. Cause it's like, girl, why, like, why you stay coming for me? That's just what I really want to know. You stay coming for me for no reason. And you supposed to be my friend. And I wish Jolie would see that that means that she ain't your friend. Cause you don't argue with your friends like this. You just don't. Well, I let me say I don't, because, yeah, I take that back, because there's too many people like, that's just how me and my best friend talk, that's just how we do, but we know it's all love, I, I'm i not for that, I'm for peace, we can joke, I have no problem with jokes, you can shade me here and there, but not too much, not too much, because you see what's going on with Riley and Jolie, because underneath some of that shade is real feeling, so I'll take a little bit, but when I notice too much, it's like, oh, You really feel this way about me. So Jolie tells Major to order for her because that's how much she's just not here for this date. Major orders something with the tomato sauce and TK calls it out, you know, like, aren't you allergic to tomatoes? But she's like, it's fine. It's like, why are you trying to kill yourself to prove a point? But being spiteful, she eats it anyway. And when TK calls it out, you know, like, are you not finna hurt yourself? But she eats, she still eats it. He has to go get an EpiPen out of his car because he has two twin younger siblings who also have allergies. So he keeps an EpiPen around and he gets it out of his car and he sticks her. And... (laughs) And it was so funny because when he sticked it, he said, you know, I should let you die since you want to be petty. (laughs) But of course he doesn't. So after that incident, Jolie is still communicating with J.I.S.A.F. about her trip to Dubai, 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 you know, because she's still trying to sell her virginity. T.K. tells his mom 
to stop trying to force him with Cheyenne. He is done with her for real this time. Because even when she showed up to the hospital, that didn't mean anything. Okay, you showed up. You and my mama still talk. Once again, that has nothing to do with me. And he basically kidnaps Jolie because he knows her schedule and brings her back to his house. Cheyenne has once again rammed her car into his gate to open it up to give herself access to his house. So she is waiting at his house with her sister. And they tr- and when he sees, you know, what's going on, he tells Jolie, do not get out of this car. Stay right here. Do not get out of the car. Just stay in. But trying to avoid Cheyenne and her sister, she climbs what to the back and get her back. She's going to try to escape. But because she moved, her Cheyenne's sister Chastity sees and tells Cheyenne, look, he got that bitch in the car again. So they go to the car, you know, trying to attack her again. But Jolie has maced this time. So she maces all three of them and tells TK to leave her alone for real this time. It's just like every time I'm with you, it's something with this girl, which, you know, she is your girlfriend. So leave me out of it. And uh, after that, Cheyenne and Chastity show up to her school, but security blocks them because it's like y'all coming up, y'all coming up to a school. Y'all coming up to school property trying to fight somebody. Of course, security is going to squish y'all off the premises, off the campus. Riley is trying to have a woman-to-woman conversation with TK, with, with TK, with Jolie about TK when the nigga don't belong to none of them, neither one of them. And I'm like, how are you trying to check me, but you calling this man Cheyenne's man? Like, why didn't you tell me you was messing with Cheyenne's man? But what she really trying to say is, why you ain't tell me you was messing with my man? But it's like, you knew in a way, because the only time you could get him to spend some time with you is if this other girl was involved. And number two, like I said, you are my friend. How are you trying to check me about anything? Now, if it's something that I'm doing crazy, and you know, as a friend, like, I'm going to check you and tell you, you need to get your life together. But you really trying to come to me, almost fight me about a man that don't belong to you, don't belong to me, but belong to somebody else. So why is it your concern of what I do about anything? Jolie tells her it wasn't like that and asks Riley if she can explain at a later date. And this is so frustrating because it's like, why are you asking to explain anything? You don't owe Riley shit. You don't owe her no explanation, none of your time. None. She don't deserve none of it. So I wouldn't be asking to explain anything to her. Fuck Riley. And Octavia basically tells her the same thing. It's like, you know, come on, let's get out of here. You don't owe her nothing. And that's why I said you pray for a friend like Octavia because Octavia Ben knew that Riley really wasn't her friend she's been trying to tell Jolie that this whole time so when I said that Jolie has two friends you know she has two friends but they are not all friends together because if she could Octavia would always leave Riley hanging like I do not want to hang out around her I tolerate her for you but when it comes to other stuff I don't want her around So now it's time for her trip to Dubai. She gets flown out in a private plane. And when she lands, she is taken to a beautiful suite. Everything is just so glamorous, spectacular, you know, the works. The problem is when she gets into the room, there's a group of half-naked men. And none of them look like the guy from Instagram or the pictures that she saw. And the IG page, when she goes to look for it, has been deactivated. So Jolie now realizes she's been tricked as the group of men start walking towards her. And one of them says, it's party time, beautiful. 